<laughs> yeah. I'd like to say hello, my children. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, pal. You know how many fights and kids I got into over that music? <laughs> Actually, sometimes at the same time, I'll tell you. <laughs> Holy cow. Piper's Pits Pods. Pods Pits. We're trying to figure out a way to say it. Piper's Pits Pit Pod. Hi, I'm Roddy. <laughs> Welcome to Piper's Pit. Holy cow, it's been a long time since I talked to you guys. I have some really uh, special guys here. Um, with with me in this first Piper's Pit podcast are uh, in different, completely different ways, two really good friends of mine. Um, one, uh, a very accomplished actor, uh, and uh, <laughs> he's a great guy. Um, he's also a Shakespearean actor, and he's been very, very well. You too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been very highly educated. Highly educated, done some great movies like Kindergarten Cop with uh, uh, Schwarzenegger played the bad dad, and uh, Black Hawk Down, blah, blah, blah. They go on and on and on. And I, I love them. Uh, and it's Richard Tyson. Thanks, man. Thank nice you for you. coming. Yeah. Rob, <laughs> you know, nice you. yeah, nice <laughs> to see you. It was kind of like this. So I said, Richard, please like meet me here at 1 30. So he called me right up at 1.30, and he <laughs> says, I said, listen, tell me how to get there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm here waiting on you. Hey, I wanted to bring you something, speaking Wait, of movies, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh. This is uh, from the only movie I never finished. <laughs> and you were in it with me. <laughs> and it says, Escape from Hell. No, uh -huh. See You in Hell. That's what see You in Hell. <laughs> and we will. <laughs> yeah. I I got it just a second before. Sure. Okay, boy, do we got a lot to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then also with me is uh, just like, he's going to be the next uh, whatever he wants to be, a great mm -hmm. comedian. Uh, he, uh, I first met him, he was parking cars and taking open mics at the comedy store and any place else he could and worked his way through that. It's like the frat house. I, I call it the Hells Angels frat house of comedy shows, mm -hmm. the comedy store. And he worked his way through that and it's hard. And then he working with Jeffrey Ross. Are you still? Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, um, Tony Hinkcliffe. Thank uh, yeah. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, I... Uh, I can't tell you uh, how glad I am for you to come down, uh, put some youth in. And he's like, a, so if, well, if you don't know where Tony and I... Put some youth in? What does that mean? I mean, not I wasn't with talking you. about myself, <laughs> <all right. laughs> you don't Don't sit with your back to me either. <laughs> he, uh, he, Tony, was a really good amateur wrestler. And what what weight did you wrestle? Uh, 112. 112. Check this Ooh. out. I got new wrestling shoes. Gold. Sup. Wow. Is this uh, cool or what? That's gold. Yeah. Gorgeous George. Oh, I love them. I, I, I got them. I got them to wear on New Year's Eve. You know, it's a big night for stand-up comedy, and I had a big main room spot sold out. But then after I wore them that night... I just kept wearing. I can't. See? I can't wear, go back to boring normal shoes yeah. now that I've sold wrestling. And the wrestling shoes. shoes. Yeah. the wrestling oh. shoes. They're the best. They give me all the support I never got from my dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I met Magic Johnson. I, I had Magic Johnson shoes on. They call they call them weapons. You know the purple and gold ones. I, yeah. And I was so nervous when I met him. I had just gotten out here. I'm like, Magic, would you shine my shoes? And he goes, All right. He talked to his assistant. Like, All right, who's the guy? He said. I said, I mean, sign my shoes. Sign it, you know. And Did he you signed say it. Shy? Yeah, I said, I was nervous, you know. And I said, and he's like talking to his people. Who the hell is this guy? Oh, you know? baby Jesus. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. I said, I will Boy. never wear them again. I wore them until they fell off my feet. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. Oh, could yeah. you shine my shoes? Yeah. I, sorry <laughs> about that, cow. magic. Yeah. He'd probably do a good job, though. Wow. I'd have no problem uh, with that. He, I would. Yeah. Um, so, like, these two guys, I uh, I was going through some tough times, and I'd go to the comedy store uh, and get up on stage and then go, and the only thing I learned there is how to play the piano. <laughs> 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 and, like, um, and the comedians, like, they were so kind. 
And I, I knew, though, it was time to get out of the comedy store of, for a while when it was 4 p.m. in the morning and there was Tony and Don Barris oh, and Luke and all the rest of the guys and they had a wiffle bat and they had four, four bases and they were playing baseball at 4 a.m. in the morning with a wiffle bat. Yeah. You know, I looked at it with the four kids and I said, you know, Dad, <laughs> you might need to move on here yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Worn out the welcome. I'm, I'm not even joking. It's like, it's one of the 10 most haunted places in America. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. Uh, I'm on podcast one now. Reason I'm on it is because it's got a one in it. <laughs> so I just came from. Uh, but for you folks, the last thing that happened, you see, is I had that podcast, uh, Universal City Walk. And, but then the building it was in, these two fellas that were doing it, they didn't see eye to eye. And so I come to do my podcast one time, and the studio's there, but like all the microphones and stuff, are, you know, they, they were taken out. And it kind of put a. A block of my podcast for a couple of weeks. I tried to just for like the, in the olden days, wood, you know, for a you know, that didn't work either. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I figured, well, I guess they're not coming back. And so then I got, you know, I got uh, got an attitude about it, and uh, and I left. Uh, since then, ah oh, man, there's so so much stuff will come out. I just, you know, I, I don't know. You you tell me well I'm lucky and I I, I got to see uh, Hogan uh, for the first time yeah you know, I don't know two days ago yesterday uh, since the Hall of Fame in 205 you know and I, I just looked at him from afar you know um, it was very it was very uh, whoosh whoo. it it wasn't like uh, whoosh. You could have cut. You could have cut the air with a knife, and uh, it was real. Step ago, and they had a Q and A with Hogan and I. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. Uh, <laughs> bring it on. And it was just like, why? Okay. And so, like, and Mean Gene was doing the uh, the middle guy, and uh, they came up to me and said, "Listen, do, do you want him to go up first? Do you want to go first? I don't give a. I just just go." But then, you know, uh, they had this big table and him on one side and me on the other. So I turned my chair so I didn't have my back to him and then asked him some nice questions, you know. Because I just met his daughter uh, for, for a long time, Brooke. She's a sweetheart. What a wonderful lady she is. Um, and so we sat down and they started asking Hogan and I questions. And... Uh, it got pretty, it got pretty, you know, this is what they're trying to do, is um, because they're so intelligent in in Charlotte, <laughs> you know, and after the zoo, we're going to Hong Kong, lots of places. These guys making the show, they were kind of pushing to push Hogan and light a fire under Hogan's butt and my butt. And as I realized that, I said to them, let me ask you something. If we go to it, Who's going to stop us? <laughs> and are you paying for the damage? At which point, then they all ran away, and uh, it was real serious. So then I heard uh, Mr. T is uh, getting inducted in the Hall of Fame celebrity division. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I swear, I begged, I begged, let me introduce, let me do the introduction. Come on. I promise you, I'll give you an introduction that they'll be speaking for for generations. But I don't think I'm going to get that one. Uh, we're at WrestleMania 30, there's a lot of politics going on. Flair, I don't know, did a thing called wife swap with Flair. Shoot, it's four days with my wife, you know. She had him crawling on his belly like a reptile. 31 years, baby. Never been rowed. <laughs> <laughs> had, him, had Flair with some kind of stupid carbon, uh, car, boxcar mustache on him and, uh, and like a hoodie. Uh, and took him chopping, you know. Yeah, he suffered too. Space Mountain, my butt. <laughs> and he said to be his wife, but you know. 
made me a meatloaf, killed the dog. <laughs> I think of other things. Um, oh, my house is haunted. Uh, but that's true. Uh, it's, it's, I've never talked about it before. Uh, before they offered me money to talk about it. <laughs> At which time, being, you know, the real square guy I am, uh, you can go to... Uh, Roddy under R, uh, R underscore Roddy underscore Piper underscore on Twitter, and if I get a question from you, I'll take it. I know we're not live, but you better hear yourself on TV. Uh, one day, if this podcast ever gets on TV, uh, so what was I talking about? Uh, you were talking about you your haunted house. <laughs> Thank you, the haunted know. house. I don't listen to you either. My kids in my house, all my kids, they got used to it. Where just some of the stories would be like. They're in the bathroom brushing their teeth, and a shadow goes by in the morning. But, like, so much, they didn't pay any attention to it anymore. There's uh, one room in the house that um, you go inside that room. Actually, my wife, my wife, you know, Zsa Zsa Gabor. Uh, <laughs> it's the reason I'm going to be a Hall of Famer in 10 sports, so I can pay her rent. Uh, she... Um, uh, filled one room. There was these kind of dolls that that are a certain kind of doll, and they all got like these porcelain eyes. Don't like the dolls. Oh, uh, and they all got clothes, and they're all around the room, and they all stared at you. It's just oh. as creepy as it gets. Oh, oh. My okay. mom has the same thing. I went and yeah. visited her over Christmas. I saw those things. I'm like, I'm not staying in this no. room. Or you got to get the dolls out of here. Get <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do it? And so, like one night, like I got in a fight with my wife, and. Uh, uh, so I went down there to sleep because I hadn't been drinking. And uh, <laughs> and I laid down. And I know this is going to sound stupid. Uh, and I lay down, and there was this eerie feeling. But I was just drunk enough to go, look, I ain't going to bother you. Don't bother me. I want to sleep. <laughs> I have the three of my girls one time went in there with the Ouija board, and they came running out, and they will never. Uh, <laughs> the Ouija. Yeah, they will never, ever. Talk, they won't talk about what happened in the room. And you see dark shadows walking around sometimes? Dark shadows. I don't. I've only seen one thing. But all the dolls blink at the same time, right? <laughs> Are we sure the dark shadows aren't just Virgil running around your house? What's going on there? Oh, it's an autograph table? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the ghost of Virgil. Uh, I'm just trying to catch him up. Uh, uh, and, uh, whew, whew, yeah, I got, you know what? It's one of those things. I got so much to tell you. I had nothing to say. Whew, but we'll get over that. <laughs> Talk is Jericho. Howie Mandel is on Talk is Jericho. I'll kiss you on the lips. I just won't shake your hand. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, right? Yeah, but that's my LCD. I just won't touch things. Listen, I have three children. I have three children. I just, and you know, I had them without shaking my wife's hand. Download it now at podcastone.com. That's podcastone.com. Uh, <laughs> a little kicky has. Um, I used to uh, keep him going. I would take uh, a ghetto blaster and, like, where I live, I live on top of a mountain. And I'd take an axe and a Schwinn. And it was 30 miles to the gym. I'd drive th ride 30 miles to the gym, work out two and a half hours, ride back up the mountain, and then take the ghetto blaster with uh, this music on it. And uh, chop trees down. Wow. Because chopping trees is really good for your punch. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's good for So, for all that useless knowledge, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> Jojo the Dark Face Boy, he walks and talks. He's half reptile, one thin dime, just about all right. We're back. We're back on uh, Piper's Pit Pod. Boy, they're going to have fun with that. PP, PPP. -P -P. <laughs> <laughs> with my guests uh, and my friends. Uh, what was your name again, Richard? Uh, Tyson. Tyson. <laughs> Tyson. Can you Richard forget Tyson. Tyson? Yeah. <laughs> and Tony Hinkliff, uh, who uh, is going to be uh, ruling the entertainment. You're gonna. I can see you like. Um, uh, geez, what's his name? Seinfeld. Oh yeah. Seinfeld. Yeah. I can see you do something like that. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, I would love to have a career like that. It. That, yeah. That's that's an amazing one. Yeah. Where, where's your career right now? 
It's really, really exciting. I'm working on some stuff, man. I'm so lucky that I got a couple cool opportunities. Right now, I'm actually working on a big musical theater role for the first time ever. Wow. A what big are, role. What's you, the name of the play? Well, I'm up, for, I'm up for a role right now. I don't know. I got the call back in a couple weeks, but I'm up for the role, lead role of Book of Mormon. All right. So yeah. I've been up. Dude, time, time. Everybody out of the pool. You're going to be a Mormon? <laughs> well, well it's, a, it's a big play. A big, big, big one. He's doing musical theater. That's what he's doing. Oh, oh, oh. You, oh yeah. okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And the funniest thing out there right now, it's called Book of Mormon. So I'm working it's really hard at that. Mormon. Mormon. For the Same first show. time, I'm... God, is it yeah. about Mormons? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it's... And their books? So funny. Yeah. It's, it's funny. And you're going to play Moses? Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> this is hard enough, Richard. <laughs> so that's really cool, though. Yeah. yeah, it's been the first time that I've gotten able to really learn how to lose myself in an acting role instead of playing myself as a stand-up every night. So I get to take a break once in a while and become something else and play nice. pretend, and it's well, just the I'll best. I'll give you my number. That'd be amazing. <laughs> all right with me. I'd love yeah. to have four wives. <laughs> Uh, not in this one, but no. hopefully, hopefully, hopefully after the shows, I'll have four wives. <laughs> no, 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 you don't want to hope that at all. <laughs> not your uh, own. But, but so, like, this is uh, performed in a theater live? Yeah, big time, sold out. Have you ever performed uh, a dialogue? I've done live? stand-up in theaters, but I've you, never you done something you had to memorize. Well, no, but but I, I sort of no already, problem. yeah. That, <laughs> normally, I'd have a problem with it, but this thing I like so much that it's sort of easy for me to uh, to memorize it because yeah, I'm yeah. really into it. So, and you, you have been punched a lot, and uh, correct, probably easier. I think you'd be great in something like that. Yeah, and you got a call back for it. Yep. Yeah, and who's the guy I need to call for you? Right uh, now. <laughs> that's a tough one. Yeah, it's a tough one. <laughs> They've already won Tony's, but hopefully they'll win one more by casting me. They will, too. Because uh-huh. your name's Tony. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. Um yeah. Richard uh, and I worked together um, uh, in an acting job. Well, he acted. I you know, screamed and stuff. <laughs> and, and it's like one of the one of the great Hollywood stories, you know, of uh, what happens when you come to Hollywood. Richard shot me over this T-shirt during the break, and on the T-shirt it says Sinjin Smith, and it says one line: "See you in hell." <laughs> Nope, not correct. <laughs> we, I've never had this ever happen to me. Yeah. I was with uh, Richard. Richard was teaching me Shakespeare. Uh, we were having a great time. It was shot. It was great. And it broke down for a holiday or something. I can't remember why. And we're allegedly the director's going new two new homes in Hawaii. Yeah, something. he's doing fine now. He's, he's doing, doing fine. <laughs> Just never came back. And left with the money. Left with the money. The people that I don't know who they were, don't know the companies, what they were thinking, and they just, and they were gone. And we got a half a movie. So now, wait a second. So in while we're doing this half a movie, which was really, really coming across, they had this one guy, you know, playing the devil, right? So Sinjin. He was the lead singer of some... Uh, he's, band, yeah, right? like, so he's got like... He, but he's got prosthetics on, you know, so you can't see him. So, he, you know, he comes out to me, and he's really nice. And he says, uh, hey, uh, he says, uh, I play the bagpipes. I says, that's nice, that's nice. You going by catering there? <laughs> Did you get me a call? Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, like, we were there for, what, three weeks or yeah, two and a half weeks? Yeah, you know, later, he says, yeah, I have a, he says to me, I, um. Like, I have a band, and, and I play the bag. But that's great. That's great. Good, good. Good, good. Good, good for you. Uh, do you? Some, next Coke, get me some uh, schnookers. <laughs> and he came back again, and I wear a kilt. He says, like a leather kilt. And I had, like, the third reference, you know. And so, ah, well, good for you. You know, I, I wish you all the luck in the world. Uh, like, grade one is uh, professional. What grade do you play? And he just kind of looked at me. And so I asked him his name, and I didn't know him. And I went home to my uh, kids, and uh, 
the name of the band was Corn, and I thought like cornflakes. Yeah, <laughs> but it was and the guy's name was Jonathan something. Jonathan Davis. Yeah, yeah. And he. I don't know how many cokes he was he the got devil. Me. He was the devil. Oh, I don't wow. know how many cokes he got me. <laughs> he was a real sweet kid. Yeah, and he wears a black. I guess I don't know where I come in with his bagpipes, but uh, oh, the thing is, he about, rocks with them. He absolutely he? kills it with them. Oh, he's. he's I've totally never seen electric. Him. Uh, I think electric, right? He was talking. Yeah, about I that. think so. I think so. But I, but it, it's really a right. great sound. Very powerful, deep. I mean, you'd you'd really get a kick out of it. I'd like to see it someday. Yeah. But the whole yeah. thing about that movie was that they put so many prosthetics on you couldn't tell who he was. Right. It's like why well, get a famous person? <laughs> yeah. Or, you know. Yeah. I mean, no come kidding. On, right? Some stuff off. So yeah. at least his fans would yeah. know. He we got Elvis. Uh, we're gonna. He's gonna play a hermit. <laughs> put some hair on his face. And, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, and don't comb his hair. And don't, yeah, but um, if they ever finish that movie, and it was eerie, too. It was eerie. It was shot out. It was a great place, and it was shot out, and they had the smoke and the lights at nighttime. Yeah. And, I mean, it was really good, and then I've never had one before. You know, so go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> See you in hell. See you in hell. See you in hell, yeah. They never finished it, huh? So that no. stuff's never just out it. there. It's just, I don't know where... Out there, they had an office in Warner Brothers, didn't they? Uh, yeah, Warner Hollywood. Warner Hollywood yeah. and yeah, Lucille Ball Studios there. That's right. And uh, so you know, another great career move by Rod. Seeing, uh, <laughs> 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 seeing what else I'm supposed to remind you of. I've been working. Uh, oh man, this guy. I have to tell you, you guys know me. How many? Have you ever seen me ever get physical outside the ring? No. Only for money. And, you know, I'm a coward. No, I, I, uh, I don't think I have. I've seen you move some furniture around on the set. I said, Rod, you're taking somebody's <laughs> job away, you know. I, I thought you were going to throw it, but you were just moving it, you know. I was like, that's somebody's in the union, and they, they that's their well, job. Well, that you weird just on work set? on your lines. <laughs> Yeah. He's doing Holy every, cow. He's doing everybody's oh. job on the set. I'm like, I'll be over here working on my lines, all right? That's, that's what we need you for. I remember we were standing there one time, my shoelace was undyed, <laughs> and I went to tell you, stay. Yeah, Wardrobe. Man. And they oh, tied my shoelace. Oh, no. Oh! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you, you maniac? Last of the old timers. Oh, man. Where are you calling me from? I'm from the beautiful South Kakalaki, uh, South Carolina. Lugoff, <laughs> South Carolina is a town I live in. Sounds like a spitting competition, right? We had a Lugoff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have a tie. You see if you want to win. Uh, <laughs> But uh, uh, I was just up in uh, New York City this weekend, and I got home. So it's a nice contrast, you know, to go from Manhattan to uh, Lugos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You sound good. Are you going yeah, to? Uh, are you going to WrestleMania 30? Yeah, I sure am. Uh, looking forward to it. Get down there. I think Wednesday or Thursday. And uh, I know we got the Hall of Fame dinner and a couple of fan access things. Uh, I think they're doing something with um, the Legend House that they're having a special section at, at fan access. Well, I hope so, I, I hope none of them die before we get there. Yeah, so Tony <laughs> Ellis shows up. He may die by storm. <laughs> We did a we did so we did a late, we did a, a a show together, hacksaw and I, and it was a oof. It comes out in about a week and a half. There's ten episodes, and uh, it's called Legend House. And so like I I, I don't bunk with nobody. <laughs> I have a problem there, and they wanted me to bunk with uh, hacksaw. Bunk, <laughs> like you know, share room. Oh. Now, just geez. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. And so, I don't know, Hacksaw, so like, maybe first couple, two, three nights, I stuff in the floor of the living room. <laughs> but, you know, I was getting old. Once I tried to escape, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> it, went over, it went over the wall. For the first two days, you know, like I haven't had a roommate since college myself, since the old SMU days when we, you know, we were a, a football powerhouse. We'd, we'd go over and play, uh, you know, Tennessee, Arkansas, come down. We'd beat the devil out of Alabama one time. Come on, <laughs> come on now. Bear, bear, coach, uh, well, bear Bryant? Bear, oh, Humpy <laughs> Bear, Sugar Bear. Oh, Bear, bear Bryant. I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Back in the seventies, man. Yeah, yeah. You can tell Bryant why you don't bunk there. with nobody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> where are you? Where are you from, Richard? I'm from Alabama. I'll be darned. Real tough. The Auburn guys. Uh, you know, I think there are a couple of those guys uh, running around. I haven't seen them lately. <laughs> Are we you didn't sure? see the last play of that game. The guy ran all the way beyond us. We never saw him. <laughs> Got to ruin my uh, holiday. There. Gotcha. You you have a master's from uh, from Cornell. From Cornell. Yeah. Yeah. I do. And and uh, uh, what you doing talking to us? <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> I roomed with you. Wait a minute. Oh, that's right. Finally, we got white wrestlers tape and tape the Mason Dixon line. You don't come yeah. over here. I won't come over there. Right. I'm sick yeah, of tripping on two by fours. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah, side was the bathroom on? Uh, well, that, uh, that's, that's important. Problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, I tell you, the first two days we just kind of eyeballed each other. Though I tell you, like, hey, how are you? Good. How are you? Right. <laughs> and, wake up and, see and then you. we hit it off. Though we became yeah. uh, good, really good friends, and yeah. we we, you you know, we kind of controlled that uh, that game show. It was called uh, the New Roommate Game or New Roommate Game. Or <laughs> I, can, I can only tell you so much about that. I, I can tell you this. So they go, he's my roommate, and they're going to ask us questions. Jeff Dye did this. Uh-huh. They're going to ask us questions, so they go away, and I hear one of the questions, right? <laughs> so I take the answer, and I steal a pen, and I write it on my hand. <laughs> so now everybody's back, camera's on, everything's official, right? And, you know, Jim's great, but, like, uh, he, he wears glasses, <laughs> but not on <laughs> TV. <laughs> now I got my hand wide open, and now I, I realize, so I, are you nearsighted? Are you farsighted? <laughs> I'm putting in and out, and in and out, and in and and I'm trying to be coy about it, and all of a sudden he gives me like the, oh, yeah, I got it. I, I got, got it. it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to give the whole thing away, but so, so sincerely when they asked Jim what the answer was, he goes, life. <laughs> Life <laughs> says wife, you goof. You've <laughs> <laughs> oh. been talking about it. Yeah, like, what's week? the most important thing in your life? And I'm looking at his hand. You know, he's moving back and forth. I'm finally, I got it. Life. And I thought, well, knowing Roddy the way I know him these past uh, couple of weeks, I think the most important thing in life to, to Roddy is life itself. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. so the real we question was the whole most show. Imp- We've been cheating the whole show, of course. So the real question was, what's the most important thing in your wife? <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. No, it was just, uh, it was just a something comedy. Like yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Comedy yeah. marriage. Yeah, it was a few weeks ago, right? A lot <laughs> happened since then, but that was the gist of the story. It was at, you, we did it at um, uh, Mark, uh, Harpo Mark's mansion. Palm Springs, yeah. there like four weeks. It comes out in the yeah, that, that was. Oh, uh, yeah. Was, and you had to share a room? <laughs> well, <laughs> Big well, there mansion? Was, there was eight guys. Uh, oh, legends. Okay. And the king size bed really wasn't that damn big. <laughs> <laughs> was it a Jerry the king size bed? <laughs> no, but the queen size Pat got there. <laughs> 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 I love you. Uh, how are those two beautiful daughters doing? Ah, uh, they're yeah, they're doing good. I have two and, daughters, Celia and Rebecca. One's uh, will be a senior next year at uh, the Coker College, a little Division two school here. And nice. my other daughter's been accepted at a few schools here in uh, South Carolina. So nice. yeah, things are going good. And I, yeah. this is past week. I was down in Orlando for the uh, former NFL Players Convention. So Very went cool. down there and. Uh, pretty much did like a legend house <laughs> a lot of alcohol and a little golf <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, you know, I got a two by four in my bag you know yeah of course what's... at these 
golf par- pairings, you know, they're like so and so Washington Redskins. You just go, oh, oh, so and so Miami Dolphins, oh, 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 Axel Duggan, oh, <laughs> <laughs> golf pairing. You're like, oh, hell, this crazy man. Yeah, <laughs> they love you. What's your handicap? <laughs> um, they use me as a handicap. <laughs> <laughs> um, good stuff. Uh, there was a question I wanted to answer, ask you, and I, I can't remember it. You guys um, living no. together. Did your laundry ever get mixed up? Just load full of blue tights? Because yeah. both of you we, guys both wore blue tights, <laughs> right? <laughs> I was a little different in size, brother, but thank you very much. Uh, you get on stage and realize they're not your tights? <laughs> right. <laughs> when they fall down to your ankles. <laughs> uh, it was good. It was, it was a good time. I look forward yeah. to seeing you at WrestleMania, which... Might not yeah, well, be, I think I yeah. see you before that. I want to see you Friday up in uh, West Virginia. This Friday for the uh, premiere of uh, Pro Wrestlers versus Zombies. You had to say that. Huh? I knew that. You knew that. I <laughs> didn't know. Uh, what is this? Another Simpson Smith too? Did you know? That? Did you know that? The, uh, I did a movie. I you know, I did a movie. Sh- Brad Pitt's going to have to give his zombie movie back. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's yeah. probably all I should say about it. Uh, it's a comedy. Uh, it's not, oh, that's it's not good. gone with the wind, that's for sure. No, no. <laughs> it's, 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 it's an audience, yeah, yeah it's, it's a comedy. Audience. It's a good comedy. And yeah. uh, it's getting more airplay than Sam Cup. Hell Comes to Sam Town, whatever oh, it's called, Frog Town. Well, I tell Another you, I one for me. <gasps> yeah, we were doing the read through for the deal, and I don't want to give the movie away, but I got turned into a zombie. <laughs> but anyway, so we're, we're doing the read through, and it says uh, Piper finds Duggan as zombie. Piper kills Duggan, but feels bad about it. <laughs> That'd be some great acting, Piper. I'll tell you. <laughs> I killed Duggan. I killed Duggan. And the old hole. <laughs> but he did a great job. I tell you, everybody, you know, was impressed. I mean, uh, that acting is a lot harder than I was playing myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, you did good. You did good. I love you for calling in. Uh, uh, where do I see you, the zombie movie in... On the East Coast Friday. Oh, let me plug. Yeah, I got Duck Dynasty. I'm a, a special guest on Duck Dynasty on the A and E Network. What are you well, doing on Duck Dynasty? They're going to dress you as a duck. <laughs> 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 There's a big one, darling. <laughs> I, I smell my beer. <laughs> nah, that's really they cool. Had, they, they had a wrestling show when I was like the special guest because you know that's where I became hacksaw down in that area. And, and Jace uh, is, was a big fan growing up, so uh, nice. they had me jump out. Of a back of a truck, and I said, You want me to jump out of the back of the truck? <laughs> you got some stairs or something? <laughs> How fast was yeah. it going? Yeah, yeah, well, it was a day. Um, again, I'll see you at WrestleMania. I'll see you at the. All uh, right, buddy. Just a second. I'll see you at the. Uh, Zombie thing, but there. Zombie uh, thing yeah. on the. Uh, but let me. I want to leave. I'm trying to. I, just because I know that. You know, I'm a sap sometimes, but get this. You know, Fallon, my youngest daughter, he's got a daughter that's close to my youngest one. Well, she just came down to L.A. for spring break with her boyfriend, and Dad gets her tomorrow. <laughs> and Dad has full <laughs> control of her, so I'm taking them to the most haunted space in America, the comedy <laughs> store. <laughs> and I'm going to take them down at nighttime like Venice Beach, you know, where they used to hang and kill right. people. Uh-huh. And when your daddy was young, you know, give them the, the wrestlers tour there. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> well, you, yeah, you took me and my family to that haunted place in the... It's uh, great. It's that great. was great, man. My kids still talk about it. My yeah. wife's the uh, well, hair got caught on the wall, but uh, my daughter said, your hair was standing up. up. I'm here in. <laughs> That's good stuff. Uh, we're yeah. both big dads. We're both big dads. Right. I love you with all my heart. Ladies and gentlemen, right, nice Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Oh, yeah. 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 What a guy. He's a stand-up man. You know, he's a cancer survivor. Oh, really? Yeah. He, uh, uh, what was it, a kidney? He lost a kidney. Wow. You know, he said, yeah, you know, I was working and I had to go to the bathroom. I thought something hurt, you know, and he he passed one or something. Wow. And, yeah, and they went in and and fixed him up. Wow, that's He's a hell of a man. Um, I have so much stuff. 
Tony's going to be in Par- uh, Portland, Seattle, Vancouver. Tony Hincliffe. Mm-hmm. Um, when is that? That's a four uh, April uh, April eighteenth, nineteenth, and twentieth. Uh, nice. that's, that's all available. And then I like the uh, <laughs> I like the at kill Tony uh, on Death Squad Network. You know, you got. I, I, I promise I'll do that one. But so now I got to take a break before I get into this next piece of business because it's going to be an ugly one. Um, so if you're you know light of heart, grab grandma. Put her away. <laughs> Get ready. I'm going to make your day right after this break. Right now, you're with Richard Tyson, Tony Hincliffe, and moi. Hey, everybody. This is good old JR Jim Ross, and I've got Diamond Dallas Page on the Ross Report. A couple times we did Hollywood Squares. I remember some of the actors going, so when is your off season? And I said, when I'm hurt. <laughs> when I'm injured. <laughs> I'm off. So download the Ross Report at podcastone.com. That's podcastone.com. Ah, uh, the beautiful tune. It's called the Green Hills of Tyrol, if I'm not mistaken. Which uh, actually is a retreat, <laughs> um, which I should have done years ago. Oh, the car, I love the pipes. You know, it doesn't matter if you're important. It doesn't matter what nationality, color, group, doesn't matter. You got the bagpipes there when you died. Whether you're Nelson Mandela, Ronald Reagan, it uh, doesn't matter who. Queen of England's got the bagpipes. God bless them. I love them. Thank you so much. Poof, I need to get some stuff done here. Uh, I've been having fun. <laughs> really, Rod? Uh, first of all, like uh, I want to, uh, I want to thank the people that uh, allow me to sit here and have some fun with friends and pay the bills. It's pretty cool. Uh, with uh, Richard Tyson, I just phoned him and boom, he was right down here. He's my brother. <laughs> it's uh, great to be here, Rod. Yeah, <laughs> great. anything you need. Let's let's do another movie and not finish it. <laughs> <laughs> and we have two two movies. Yeah, it's like you know when I was doing the movie with who is Richard. It was I was being like hazed, and so <laughs> oh, the, the director oh, oh. come over and there'd be a gun and they'd give it to Richard, and he just hand it to me and I'd take it, <laughs> and another gun and he'd hand it to me and I'd take it, and then there'd be something. Other, then there was the lantern. Like, I'm Looking like uh, James Dean, you know, I'm kind of looking like uh, the guy with the hump. (laughs) I I didn't want any props because we were going to be moving through the area, running through there. He's got all these props. I keep passing them to him. I better keep these, I guess. Richard said so. (laughs) You said, wait until I get you in that ring. You know, I'll haze you in that ring. I'm like, I'm not getting in that ring. (laughs) Kidding me? (laughs) Oh, in that ring, boy. uh, when well, I knew with Tony Hinkliff, Tony, I remember you were telling me just uh, just when Tony was a little kid growing up watching pro wrestling and he'd wrestle uh, in his house and stuff. Oh, I was obsessed. Pretty cool. Oh, I would just wrestle my pillow for five hours a day. <laughs> I'd go inside of my closet. I'd hit play on a cassette player, and then I'd walk out of the closet slowly to the intro music. I'd be a different nice. wrestler each time. I'd. It was the first performing that I ever did was all by myself in my bedroom. Nice. Did, the, did the pillow uh, switch characters, too? I always okay. beat the pillow, luckily. <laughs> Undefeated all time. I'm like the Bill Goldberg of uh, guys facing oh, pillows. I'm like 500 and 0 or something. Something like that. <laughs> now, what, uh, sometimes didn't your mom count for you? Yep. You make her do the yeah, count. Yeah, it was so lonely that I would go. Uh, I, I would I, I would count, but I would make her ring the bell. So oh, I'd go one, bell. two, three. I go ring it, ring it, and yeah. she would know from the other room that when she heard that to just go ding, ding. <laughs> yeah. oh, Amazing. That's a mom that loves you. Oh. I've been I've been watching some wrestling again. That WWE Network, man, that is just. That's, I haven't seen it. Oh my goodness, what pipes! They, it's what like they got on it. 
Oh, so much great stuff. I was watching you the other day at a round table with Mean Gene and Taz and who else was on it? There's some other people. I mean, Michael Hayes and oh, his Diamond Dallas page kept bringing up Carl Malone over and over again. Uh, <laughs> no, time. give it a break. <laughs> give it a break, Dallas. Oh, Jeez. Obviously, it was a big deal to him, but it wasn't yeah. It wasn't exactly the biggest <laughs> imprint in wrestling history, <laughs> Carl Malone. <laughs> I remember that. Holy cow. Because the thing was yeah. about uh, the thing was about celebrities in wrestling, and That's he just right. kept mentioning the one thing that he did over <laughs> and over again. Finally, you said, <laughs> "I remember exactly what it was." Because I was rolling around on my bedroom floor, I was laughing so hard. <laughs> he goes, "Just one more thing about this, Carl," you, and you cut him off. You go, "Are you bringing up Carl Malone again, sweet baby Jesus?" <laughs> <laughs> he gets on a roll, boy. Oh. He's hard to stop, DDP. Yeah. Um, I understand they're playing like the first WrestleManias. Um, oh yeah. Oh, I mean, you're just you're just throughout <laughs> this thing. I mean, it, it gives you accessibility to true wrestling history. I can't believe how well the network's set up. I mean, it's so easy; a- anybody could figure it out, and the deal is just amazing. And you type in anything in the search bar, and all these things pop up. That's really cool. Oh, I mean, it's just yeah. for a re- old school wrestling fan like me, you know, that went in, you know, '97 and '98 when things were really competitive with you WC. Kind uh, of guy. Well, no, I mean, but I, I mean, well, yes, I'm a big fan of everything. Yeah. But during that era, I was 12, 13, and 14 when things were hot. And I mean, the competition and everybody was pushing each other. <laughs> WWE, WCW versus NWO versus uh, yeah. Stone Cold versus, I mean, Oof. everything was exploding. And there I was so lucky that at that time, I'm a 12, 13, 14 year old. And finally, with this WWE network, it's given me a chance to totally go back and relive that, which is priceless. So at man. the time... When when WCW, you see, this is the thing. I wasn't in the war. You Why weren't. did they have to declare a war? I wasn't mad at anybody. <laughs> I just, you pay me the most money, I'll fight you. Uh-huh. And I, but they made it a war. WCW against WWE. Uh-huh. F. G H I yeah elemental P whatever it was but without guys like you N W O wouldn't have happened you know what I mean they needed stability they hated me oh yeah they needed guys like you to go up against or else yeah. they were nothing they hated me you never joined huh <laughs> no and I uh, I'm pretty sure I'm the only guy ever to pin Hogan I pinned him once with my foot on his chest because <laughs> I'm a class guy. <laughs> and uh, I don't think he's pinned me other than when him and Savage. Man, it's Savage. And whoa. What, one time, you know what? Ooh, one, yeah. time, one time I'm in a... Okay, I don't know where I'm at. Uh, much like right now. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, the sh- shows have ever been working the 30, 40 days. I come up to some restaurant and, like, there's a bunch of people in there. I'm going, ah. Jesus, baby, Jesus. I don't want to see anybody. And Vince comes from behind me. Ah, ah, he pushes me in. Okay. Sit at the table. I'm sitting at the table. We're eating, we're eating, we're eating. And, you know, they're just saying things. And I'm a diva, whatever. And so it's time to go. I got sweatpants on. So I go to stand up. And Vince pulls my sweatpants, like, just to put me down. But the sweatpants actually come down a little bit. <laughs> and so I look at him. So I pulled them all the way down. I said, now, are you happy now? And, you know, blah, 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 take your money. And I left. Next day was TV. Macho Man, I see, I see him I'm down there, you know, searching for oxygen because there was some there last night. I, find. <laughs> I was a little hungover. And he come in, bright red, hadn't, hadn't had a wink of sleep all night. And he comes up and he goes, whoa. All right. I'm not feeling that great, so why don't you just whoa on? Huh? <laughs> so, he says, so uh, did you have a good time last night? I said, what does it matter to you? <laughs> I said, oh, you, you don't remember what you did? Oh, now I'm going, oh, jeez. Oh, no. <laughs> what, did I rob a store, a bank? <laughs> oh, you pulled your sweat, pulled my sweatpants down. Yeah, he says, nah, where did you know Elizabeth was in there? This is the very beginning. Oh. Like, what? Well, Elizabeth was in the bar, and I didn't see the lady. Right, She's right. behind me. And that's when, so I pulled my sweatpants down in front of his wife, who's now in the business. And I love them both. Uh, I don't, I don't, I've told the story The other guy but. pulled them down halfway, though, right? <laughs> and then you went up. Well, know. yeah, I just, but, but the point is this, like, 
if you're going to have your wife in the business, right. you're going to have to put up with a little sweatpants stuff. Right. You know, right. Especially when guys don't know and they're rolling hard. But, <laughs> and then we almost got in a fight one other time. Uh, the, uh, actually, we did. <laughs> um, Macho, Vince, and myself, and we're doing VOs, uh, voiceovers. And uh, Macho and Vince are going back and forth. And uh, for about like four or five minutes, I'm just sitting there and they're arguing. I said, hey, 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 hey. Argue on your own time. Let's get this thing done. And Macho says, oh, I don't need no cheerleader. What'd you say to me? And Vince goes, whoa, 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 please, please. They broke it all down, and they got Macho out of there, right to his hotel. I was drinking. Oh, wow. <laughs> Four hours in his hotel room. It's just another day in paradise of the WWE uh, Network. Macho, <laughs> Macho, it's always How are we doing favorite. there, sweetie? We're doing okay? Yeah. It was like, it was crazy, crazy times. When you were watching, and when you were watching with WCW, uh -huh. holy cow. Uh -huh. You know, uh... Kevin Nash and I got into it. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, and he lies, too. I got, jeez, I don't know where to go just because I wanted to talk about a gym. But um, I'll keep on this one for a second. So uh, somebody's been telling me this story, and, and I don't know. I'll just tell the truth. Uh -huh. I was in the ring someplace. I think maybe I was in it. I don't know what I was in. Maybe a tag team or something, Nash Hall, and maybe x Pac. And uh, maybe Flair and right myself maybe and somebody else. Anyway, bottom line is like they're trying to they're trying to. This is something that people don't talk about much. This is backstage politics. They're trying to uh, run rough shot, and so rough I shot. Yeah, they are. Um, they're trying to over uh, in front of the establishment's face. Their decisions count more because they feel they know better what's needed for the business than the establishment that actually owns the business of that time. So they were running rough shot on the people that own the business. And uh, so I came, we had like a horrible match. It's because the guy didn't know how to work. I didn't know how to wrestle. You know, good basketball player maybe, but I don't know, he didn't make a living there either. So uh, I mean, I come to my dressing room, like I'm really pissed off, but like I'm maybe 15 feet from the door. Flair's in there and Bischoff's in there. I'm just kind of getting my feet up on a bench, taking my laces out, and all of a sudden, the whole door comes kicked in. And he's standing in the door, and him and Nash, and he says, what, you think you're running things around here? And I, and I stopped, like, nobody had an answer for him. So I got up, charged him, laid died him, and threw him out of my dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> and then, just a second, <clears throat> so, because he said somebody just not too long ago said, yeah, I punched Piper. My ass. Uh, <laughs> and so, wait, let me tell you the rest of it, because it's kind of significant. So, all of a sudden, you know, <clears throat> hordes of people on... And they're taking Nash down the hall, and I'm standing there, but like, <laughs> I'm standing there with two guys, Barb and Haku, who I raised, the human vigematics, and Nash is being taken away, and he's pointing to me, because the next time I'm fighting him is in a pay-per-view called Moline. He goes, Moline, I'll see you in Moline. So, a day or two passes, and there's this guy named Brad Reagan, who's a very... Uh, well-schooled uh, shooter. And he's being told the story, and he says, wait a second, what did Nash say? He says, I'll see you and Moline. He says, Nash didn't want to fight. <laughs> Why wait for Moline? <laughs> now, that's a God's true story. And then what he said later was, he said, yeah, he went after my bad knee. Well, like, that's not true because I didn't know his knee was bad, but if I had known, I would have. <laughs> yeah. But it was back like that all the time. It was... Uh, it was difficult. It was very difficult. Uh, I think the guys today uh, are saner. Maybe got a better goal. Who's your favorite, Tony? Right now, uh, you know what? To be honest, I've always loved the bad guys. I'm a big fan of villains. Always been that way in both movies and wrestling. And uh, yes, and right now there's a guy named Bray Wyatt. 
who Ray Wyatt, who huh? the, he play he's like a he's like a, a down south like Alabama Louisiana type of almost like a crocodile not crocodile hunter but like a duck, what's that the, duck, the dynasty. duck dynasty type of hillbilly redneck, redneck. Yeah. doesn't have a great body yeah. not mr physique at all yeah but this guy is so agile piper you would love to <laughs> oh it's amazing what he's doing completely original Very finishing cool. moves and regular moves and he he does things where he bridges on his hands and feet upside down and just not even to do a move just to look at his opponent upside down to freak him <laughs> out <laughs> he freaks the guys out psychological nice. warfare and i'll have to check him out oh he's awesome he's, nice. he's up he's going he's so good this is his first year he's yeah. up against john cena at wrestlemania that's that's a ruck that's a rookie of the year right <laughs> yeah that's a rookie of the year for sure yeah um <laughs> and he's a bad guy judo gene labelle wow uh, um richard yeah. What, what, what you doing? Well, last time I talked to you, you were on a movie set. Yeah, yeah. It seemed to be a lot, you know. Like, I think I did 15 projects last year. Holy you know? cow. I played a psychopath for five for five weeks. Typecasting. I had a day off, and then I played a sociopath. <laughs> and, and I thought I knew the difference, but now I really do. Wow. I, I know the difference now. A day yeah. off? Yeah. Boom. Yeah. And nice. And the next day, you know, and, you know a psychopath uh, kills people because nothing's right in the world right and yeah. a sociopath kills people because everything is right in the world you well know? that's interesting right yeah and uh so this one movie called reversal we're doing post uh, next week on it. it should come out in september or something like that uh i drive a bus around town my character <laughs> drives a bus around town and uh he has one girl in f five different houses five girls and he brings soup and stuff and cleans them up but they're chained to the back wall in the back bedroom uh in each house you know and uh these guys from uh, mexico city very intellectual group down there and this is their first, a lot of them yeah. first american uh movie that they've done uh, as I'm driving the uh, the van around town, I start singing, the wheels on the bus go round and round, yeah. round and round, round and round. And they're like, hold it away. What, what is that? What is that? I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I'm driving a bus around town. And they go, I don't know if we can get that. Uh, don't do it this time. Do it this time, you know. And then I, I hear on post-production, they're like, we got the rights. So we don't have to get the rights because it's out there right and uh, and they're going to use it public on public domain yeah it's public yeah. domain and they're going to use it on the trailer they go it's really oh, creepy yeah. oh nice and, and you know it's it's so weird uh in the beginning, uh, playing the sociopath, he says, I, I said, if I was all cleaned up and I was with the girls, my character, and he's all, you know, he's got the girls on his fingers, whatever, uh, they go, uh, no, 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 you're a Best Buy. You're a manager at Best Buy, and you're just bringing food to him and cleaning up, and really, you're not, you're not one of those guys. And, and so I played for three, four weeks, that guy, you know, that Best Boy, you know, Best Guy, you know, and... Uh, you know, with 10 days left, the director goes, uh, hey, can you go a little more raunchy with this character? I'm like, oh, yeah, I've been trying to do that for four weeks, you know. And, yeah, and we get we get really sick by the end of it. You, know? you feel so, good about it? Yeah, Art? I do. I think it's going to be uh, yeah. a, a good You throw project. yourself yeah. into them. You throw yourself into them. It's I amazing. They, they say uh, you don't take your work home. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Well, you do five weeks of social bath and then do the psych. You know, the, the yeah. wife says, I think we're going to my mom's for a little while. You know? <laughs> yeah. right. Good idea. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, thanks a lot, Rod. I, yeah. I just wanted just to thank one. you. You uh, helped. You did a great thing. Me and my brothers. I have four brothers. We all grew up wrestling fans, big fans, you know. And my one yeah. brother, who's an engineer, Will, uh, he's older than everybody here, but he's still the biggest fan ever, you know. And he nice. still believes. He still. Nice. <laughs> I love it. I, I love did the it. Wrestling in Annapolis, you know, all that yeah. stuff. You know, when I first went out, to, they didn't have wrestling in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, you know, collegiate wrestling. Yeah. And so when I pinned the first guy that I, I fought up in Annapolis, uh, they go, bam, you know? Yeah. And I was like, count, 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 count. You were looking for a three count, were you? Oh, that is so yeah. great. 
<laughs> That's it. Throw on the towel. Where you? <laughs> Where'd you learn to wrestle? I said the backyard with my brothers. You yeah. know. Four brothers. Yeah. 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 And so <laughs> And so we were on the set like three days into it. You told me, he says, you know who I am. I said, yeah, I do. He goes, plug that into your trailer. He gave me a, a you know, a highlight reel and I plugged it out. Yeah, I know you. I know you, man. I know you. <laughs> I happened to call my brother. It's his birthday, and Rod's right there. We're standing in the desert waiting on someone to get their act together. Yeah. Rod, I said, Rod, would you talk to my brother? I mean, I said to Will, I said, I said, Will, uh, I'm standing with a wrestler. Do you know Rod? Rod, Rod? He goes, Roddy, Roddy, Roddy. Yeah. He goes, oh, yeah. And I'm like, I put him on. And he's in He was great. He was great. Oh, you guys talk 20 minutes. Yeah. I watch you walk all around just laughing and having yeah. a great time. And great I, family. I appreciate and that. Is, wasn't your father a senator? Yeah, state senator. Uh, he's 88 years old. We love nice. him. He's still yeah. out there. Giving good advice. family. Yeah. It's great, good man. stuff. Good stuff. Thanks, Well, I get this. Yeah, so I guess I'm, I have a Rowdy Rowdy Piper soda pop oh. coming out with, get that way, hang on, with Rocket Fizz. And you can go soon now. It's going to, I don't know, in the next, everything's been approved. The, the, I wanted to put a little more spurt on it, like <laughs> a little more soda in it. But I got a soda pop coming out. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That is all, so out cool. that is- all out of bubble gum. All out of bubble gum is the name of it. Rowdy Rowdy Piper. And, uh, like, it's going to be really flavorful. And there's like 60 of these Rocket Fizz stores. Have you ever seen one? It's a candy store. Yeah. Never heard of it until like three weeks ago when they asked me to do this. And we'll have to take you there. It's just a blast. They got one with uh, 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 a soda pop of the leader of North Korea on the label. See how you told it? You know, it's, yeah, it's a great and you. place. And me. <laughs> wow, what <That's> company? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're great. They, it's all all kids. Take your kids there for birthday sometimes. Hey, when you pop the can, is it going to rocket fizz out of oh, there? Oh, yeah, or? man. It's, i, I got to put something in there that... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I can't put caffeine in. Something the kids can drink. And, right. yeah. and, you know, like, you know those blue popsicles? Do you remember blue popsicles? Yeah. Kind of that flavor with maybe more lots of spritz in it. Because it's kind of bubble gum. What is that? Oh, yeah, bubble gum. Yeah. Bubble <laughs> gum. Yeah, yeah. Boom, boom. <laughs> yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, this is good. I, I could do this all day. Yeah. And I intend to. Yeah, especially with... Uh, Two people I love so much. You want to see the coolest hat in the world? Yeah. Right here. See this hat? You just think, you don't think it's, yeah, watch this. Mm. Read what it says in there. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Put your glasses on. Okay. For my daddy, Colt. Baird. Baird Tomahawk. Tombs. Tombs. (laughs) Yeah. That's great, man. To my, I, to I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Get it up. <laughs> <laughs> my son. That's awesome. To, to my daddy. Oh, that's Cole Baird, too. How's he been doing? He's still oh, fighting? Oh, he's out of his mind. <laughs> hey, that's a whole other show, but I'll tell you. Yeah. Let me give you the, like, as we go, play the bagpipes as we go out there. My <laughs> son, Colton Toons. He's uh, 24 years old. Okay? You're going to hear us every Monday on... Piper's Pit Pod, and uh, every Monday I'm going to offer you my son Colton. He uh, has never really had a job, and uh, he's a fighter for a living. Uh, I thought personally you had to fight to make a living fighting. However, he seems to find uh, his girlfriend uh, who have moved into an apartment with two other kids and a dinosaur and a lizard. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and you think I'm kidding. <laughs> I love him to death. Colton Bear tunes, everybody. All my kids. Fallon Danik is down here. I got uh, another one's an actress, Aria. I got a, one of my sons over there, Green Beret now, keeping wow. us safe. I got a captain, been wounded twice, did his job. And I got two of the most finest entertainers in both the fields, Richard uh, Tyson and Tony Hinkliffe. Man, I love you so much. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me. I love you too, man. Yeah, and it's always a ball. You know, uh, Tony, I uh, get it at, you know, I kill Tony. Uh, on Death Squad Network and uh, Richard Tyson. Oh, baby, he's in. He's working all the time in movies. Hey, how about TysonDCProductions.com? TysonDCProductions.com is yeah. perfect. perfect. And uh, Rowdy Rowdy Piper. And you know what? An Irish poem. 
For those who love us, may God bless. For those who don't, may God turn their hearts. And if he can't turn their hearts, may he turn their ankles so we can recognize them by their lips. Ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> to you too. <laughs> Bye-bye.